Hi everyone, I'm Sophie Bolanis and I'm an occupational therapist who's been working here at NESCA for a few years. I am so excited because starting this fall, we've added a clinical occupational therapy department and adding, we're adding that to our services. Um, over the next couple of months, we'll be spotlighting all of our new clinicians and hearing a little bit about their personal and professional interests. Today, I'm meeting with Julie Robinson, who is directing our new team so that I can learn a little bit more about her and her work. So Julie, before I get started with my questions, I would love to have you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you as a clinician. Hi everyone, my name is Julie Robinson and as Sophie mentioned, I'm directing the clinical therapy department at NASCA. I have 30 years of experience as an OT and my initial aspect of training was um, some very intensive training with sensory integration and sensory processing. Um, since that time, I've branched out to gain experience with issues with motor development, handwriting, visual motor skills, self-regulation. My niche of children that I like to work with tends to be the eight years and younger crowd. I do work with kids with autism, learning disabilities, visual impairments, developmental disabilities, and pretty much will take on a variety of patients with just about any issue. I always view something I haven't seen before as a learning challenge, which I'm all up for. Um, I tend to work extremely well with children with self-regulation difficulties and behavior challenges, both in the home and in the school environment. And I have a passion for working with kids who have trauma histories or adoption backgrounds, where I also have received some extensive training in trauma-informed techniques. Awesome. So varied, but so specific. It's so interesting. Um, what an awesome background. So I guess my first question going off of that would be, what led to your interest in occupational therapy? Where did it start? So as a teenager, I used to want to become a professional ballet dancer. I danced in New York City six days a week and developed some severe knee difficulties and ended up going in to an outpatient clinic for physical therapy. And um, at the time I was a senior in high school and I was so interested in what was going on in there that I put in an application as a volunteer and they placed me as a volunteer assisting in groups in a pediatric outpatient clinic, um, sensory motor groups for children who had all sorts of impairments, Down syndrome, autism, motor impairments, cerebral palsy, self-regulation issues. And I was just immediately drawn into it. I love the positive impact I could have on kids and just the joyful nature of the work that I got to do with them, you know, helping them feel that they're playing all the time when really there's a lot of goals going on. And I just fell in love with it and decided at the time that that's what I wanted to do and went straight off to school and I've been doing it ever since. Yeah, that's awesome. Our job is so fun. Um, so I guess my next question is why were you attracted to Nesca? What brought you, what brought you to us? So previous to NASCA, I had been directing a therapy department of over 30 clinicians at an outpatient clinic that um, functioned very well, but it wasn't a very integrated practice with a lot of sharing of information back and forth between clinicians and not a lot of opportunities for learning and growth. I've known Ann Helmes, the owner of NASCA for several years, and I was always impressed with her positivity and her motivation, um, as well as the reputation and the caliber of services at NESCA. So I approached her to see if she'd be interested in starting up a new therapy department at NESCA. And she jumped at the opportunity and I did as well. Um, I'm really exciting about, excited about the ability to share information back and forth between clinicians. We have weekly meetings that are in-service training or case reviews where we can all help each other through the process. And it's not just clinical therapy, it's the neuropsychologists and the academics and the learning aspects of things that were very much sort of removed from my previous
previous place of employment. Um, so I'm just really eager to be able to provide an integrated and holistic approach to looking at all the children that we work with and working as a team together. Yeah. Collaboration is so awesome. I love that part of it. Yeah, it's the best. Um, so we touched on this a little bit, but I wonder if you could just elaborate on your role at NESCA outside of being a clinician working directly with families. Sure, in addition to working with kids, I have a variety of responsibilities as the director of the top department. Um, primarily right now, I'm supervising and mentoring four OT clinicians and one speech therapy clinician. We meet weekly to share information back and forth and make sure that things are running smooth administratively. I also conduct all the intakes for the therapy department as the initial point of contact when someone's interested in receiving services. And I really enjoy that aspect of my job because it allows me to know every single patient who's coming into the office for therapy because I've established a connection with the parents to gather information and sort of help them make a plan of action and to place them with an appropriate therapist match that I think is gonna be an excellent fit for them. I also help them through the insurance process and the aspect of getting coverage for their services as part of the initial process. Awesome. Um, so I do have a question about sort of the, the elephant in the room that is 2020. Um, so how has COVID-19 impacted the way that you guys treat patients and work with families? Has it had sort of a notable effect? COVID has had um, an extreme effect on the delivery of my services. And I actually have to say, in a lot of ways, it's been positive. Um, I mean, there is definitely the upsetting aspect of watching kids struggle academically or with their remote learning or floundering at home because of social isolation. But um, at the beginning of, of COVID, when the weather was nice, I started working with families outside at their homes. And it just became a way for me to see them in their natural environment and to really involve the parents in the process and connect with them and see, you know, in real time, where the struggles and the difficulties are. So it allowed me to take a much more functional, comprehensive view of what was going on with the kids that I worked with that I didn't always get working in a clinic setting. Um, working in a clinic, I have a variety of tools and equipment um, available to me, which is also a wonderful thing, but sometimes that can be sort of a distraction mm -hmm. from the work at hand or, um, at times it feels like it's just so playful. <laughs> yeah. um, so being able to work in the homes and really talk to families has just been extremely eye-opening to me and it's guided my, my practice in a different way. Um, and when I'm not working with kids at home, I've been providing a lot of teletherapy, which can be challenging, but at the same time, it allows me that view into a child's natural environment and to really involve the parents in the process. And so the progress that I've been making with the kids that I work with has actually been a lot quicker in many cases than it might've been had I seen them in my clinic setting. And I yeah. think now that I'm sort of moving back into working in, in the clinic sometimes, it's just changed my approach a little bit with the families just from what I've learned over the past nine months or so. Yeah, I've been, I've also been really impressed by how the transition to working online for me as an OT, I know we do things a little differently. I tend to work with teenagers and young adults, but I was so impressed by how it went overall and almost, almost shocked. You know, I was really surprised by the success that I was finding despite working on a completely different medium. Um, I still felt like I was doing work that was really beneficial for families and, and making a lot of progress. Yeah which I, I don't necessarily think I would have anticipated had I been asked in March. So I'm not surprised to hear that it's been almost a beneficial learning experience and productive. Uh, I think for all of us, it's been that way. I think we all anticipated, you know, a huge learning curve and not knowing where to begin with the whole teletherapy process, but we've all kind of figured it out. We're making it work and it's been a wonderful thing. Kind of worked out. Yeah. Um, so I guess my last question for you, and, and I love this question, mostly because I just love hearing about other people's work. 
um, is could you possibly share a success story that you've had with a specific patient of yours and kind of how that played out? Absolutely. I love to do those too. <laughs> if I could bring in 20 of them, I would and talk yeah. about them. I'll keep it at one. Um, I have an eight-year-old boy that I was working with and he was in a private school setting. This is pre-COVID, but um, he was not able to go to the cafeteria or recess or a PE class. He couldn't tolerate the noise. He couldn't tolerate the chaos, the kids moving visually around him. He was very verbal about the discomfort that he experienced. So I actually incorporated the use of some biofeedback with him in my therapy sessions. Um, with the use of a heart rate monitor that we would keep on throughout the session. And we played around with different sensory strategies that he could use, such as deep breathing or giving yourself a bear hug or putting your hands on your head for some deep pressure or maybe some heavy work by doing push-ups against the wall. And we would use the heart rate monitor to see if it was sort of making his engine run faster or slower. And it was a real visual tool for him to connect into what was happening in his body. I think there's so many times I've worked with kids and said to them, it looks to me like your engine's running too fast. And they might look back at me and say, no, it's not. I'm just fine. <laughs> there was a way for me to use the visual of this heart rate monitor to say, actually, I can see it's running fast because your heart rate is too high. Um, and he really was able to cognitively turn that into a skill for him. And so I sent him into school after we did this for a few weeks. And I said, okay, we discovered that when you give yourself a hug or you put your hands on your head and you put some deep pressure on your head, you really calm down. I wanna see if you can go into the cafeteria and last five minutes in there using those strategies to sort of hold yourself together so you don't fall apart. And he was all excited. Um, and so he came back to me the following week with this huge grin on his face. He was so excited because he tried the strategies that we gave him and put in place. And after just that one week, he was back in the cafeteria, back at recess with his friends. PT took a little, uh, PE took a little bit longer mm -hmm. for him because the gym setting has a lot of sound yeah. reverberating. But I think in about a month, he got to the point where he was in PE class and he was just having a great time. And he just felt so proud of himself. You know, I had given him this tool and he accessed it and used it. And uh, he's good to go from there. Awesome. Kid. Kids are amazing, man. They're so cool. Um, well, that is, that's a perfect example. I love hearing stories like that. Um, it sounds like his life was clearly changed right at school. And I'm sure it had a huge bump on his confidence as well, which is so nice to see. Um, so that's it for our interview today. It was so great speaking with you. I'm so excited about the new department. I know that it's just gonna be this incredible resource for families and for me as well. As you mentioned, I love collaboration. I love having OTs everywhere I turn. Um, and I can't wait to, speak with the other clinicians and hear more about it. So welcome, thank you for your time. And I can't wait to see everything get started and families accessing your services. So it was great thank meeting you. with you today, Julie. Thanks yeah, so much. I look forward to it as well.